Welcome to the wild world of performance upgrade pros, where the spanners fly and horsepower heroes are born. Let's break it down into three levels. Level one: the enthusiastic tinkerers. These folks are the DIY darlings of the tuning world. They've watched every YouTube tutorial, and their toolboxes are their treasure chests. To them, an ECU remap is like discovering fire, and a cold air intake installation feels like rocket science. They're the weekend warriors, the drive-away dynamos. Level two. the advanced alchemists now we are revving up these pros have garages that look like a mad scientist's lab they wield obd scanners like lightsabers and can discuss the merits of turbochargers versus superchargers over a cup of coffee and then comes level 3 the wizards of wattage like phil hold on to your seat belts these are the mythical beasts of tuning the gandalfs of the garage they look at a stock car and see a blank canvas to them stock is just a challenge not a condition they'll take your average car and turn it into a fire breathing tarmac tearing monster that can probably travel through time if you hit the right rpm they're not just in it for the speed they're here to bend the laws of physics and possibly create a few new ones introducing mr philippos mathai from speed sport So finally, I get to meet Mr. Philippos Mathai from Speed Sport. I think so. I was telling the boys yes uh, today in the morning only that mm. I don't think I have seen a single video of Phil talking on YouTube. I'm not, uh, you know, out there in that sense. Huh. I'd uh, rather be in the background. So I mean, And you know, I personally feel that there is so much that people can learn from you, considering the kind of. crazy builds that you have done personally i know you only because of the crazy builds that you have done i like i like we were talking earlier like the zen and then multiple other builds that you've been working on mm. this one that one mm. so i think it will be a treat for the people who are just you know they are let's say not even new to the world of uh, performance upgrades but also a little bit seasoned as they call themselves mm. it will be a treat for everybody to actually hear your mind out as to how you are wired mm. so i mean uh, I I'd like to start with the first question uh how did it all start for you um you know I was always uh, that little kid who uh, whose only gift uh, what he expected from his parents was yeah. a set of hot wheels okay you know the, those dicky uh, cars uh. which you get matchbox cars so and in those days used to get a lot of cars uh, mm. you know I didn't know what what they stood for or what uh, they were uh. but you know there used to be this car in a box and a small yeah. uh, description of what it was uh. so used to have lots and you know everybody at home and uh, extended family everybody understood ki mm. you know if uh, you want to make this guy smile you get him a dinky car uh. and you know later on it became to you know like a 1 is to 18 or the bigger right. ones as you right, grow right, right, right. Yeah. older uh, so that interest was always there mm -hmm. and uh, you know i'd throw them off the balcony i'd make a ramp on uh. the balcony railing uh. and um, you know kind of push it from here and watch it you know crash upside down somewhere on the floor or however i think you've just been trying to <coughs> replicate that in real life in your driving when it comes to motor sports <laughs> i try not to but once in a way it uh, it's inevitable i guess for uh. Uh, anybody who um, in any form of motor sport who drives at the limit okay you know there'll be that one day where uh, mm. things don't go your way mm -hmm -hmm. but uh, so the height mm -hmm -hmm. so um, you know as as a past time what i used to do i used to have this long driveway at home you know so one way in and another way out so my dad used to uh, we had two cars so we used to park the cars so i'd make sure the driver you know on some days when i knew my dad wasn't home I'd make sure the drive. I'd ask the driver to park the other car out. Okay. So this one car, what I'd do, um, you know, I'd put first gear. It took me, I think, a week or so to figure out, uh. you know, the the combination of how much clutch to leave and how much uh, uh. gas pedal to give. Hmm. And then, you know, at 15 kilometers an hour, I'd go to the end of the driveway, and uh, then put reverse. And I used to have this fascination of putting my hand on the other seat. and looking back <laughs> and reversing and uh, you know that went on for a long time uh. where i started and it was a stone driveway uh. so you know when you accelerate in first mm. you know there's there's a lot of wheel spin you can induce mm. so you know i used to induce wheel spin and it came to a point where there were black 
marks hints of black marks on uh, <laughs> the marble or uh. whatever stone uh. was there you know and uh, i thought nobody noticed uh. but everybody noticed and everybody kept quiet uh. you know because suddenly the key suddenly wasn't accessible you know on the table uh. you know that one table where you dump yeah, all yeah, your yeah, keys yeah, yeah. you know suddenly the key is not there sometimes it is my dad sometimes my mom has kept it in the almara so i said ye kya matlab scene kya hai so then uh, conversation had to be had he saying see this key he saying first you tell us uh, why do you want the key so then i kept quiet they say we know everything that you've been doing there are enough marks on that driveway and uh, so then uh, they said okay all this has to stop ha uh. you know you can't uh, keep doing this one day you'll scrape it on the wall mm. then as a another biscuit that was handed out to me they said okay um, you know near nehru planetorium what is now the police uh, delhi police center or uh, 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 there's uh, a building uh, there yeah back there it was just an empty ground okay so they said we'll take you there and once you're inside we'll sit with you and you drive okay you know if that that is what it takes to okay. pacify this uh, urge ha huh. and i said okay so you know first initial couple of weekends uh, so by then technically i knew how to drive ha huh. you know i could leave the clutch i could put second i could turn i'd need a sofa under and behind me but uh, car was driven ha huh. so then fifth sixth, sixth weekend they said ye chalo jata hai aata hai you know every, you know it's this uh, everything is okay so then uh, they said okay you take the driver we are busy okay so the moment now driver is different dad is different so driver i said you stand outside okay so i put full first full second ha huh. you know then somewhere in some magazine you know i said handbrake ha huh. so then we start pulling handbrakes oh my god <laughs> and uh, it kept going uh, for a while ha huh. till i think uh, one day i think the drive shaft or something broke while i was doing this <laughs> you know it, it it used to be a peugeot 309 uh, front wheel drive okay okay so um, at least what was allowed to do all this in and um, then they said what have you done hmm. now i didn't know that they didn't know okay but i connected in my mind that you know the driver has gone and ratted me out to save ah. his job ah. so i said no no but i only pulled twice okay there was no reason in <laughs> retrospect to say it and they would have never known they said now what is this you know you said this then we did this you said this we did this now you want to drive so we found you an enclosed space uh. to drive now what is this pulling handbrake and uh, you know abusing a car car is uh. meant to be driven point you know, a to point b type uh. you know sedately and uh, in a gentleman manner uh. not in uh, hooligan uh, <laughs> uh, sense of things is the word hooligan is what uh. Uh, i remember my father told me and i didn't understand what it meant but uh. um so that is that interest was there then i found a couple of friends who um, you know uh, who would come home in the evening a few years later and um, they stopped uh, filling fuel in my in all my house cars you know because we used to have a parchi system with uh, uh, uh. petrol pump on the main uh, road uh. so it's tank to tank uh. so they said whenever we have this so suddenly one or two months you know the bill just went whatever i think petrol used to be 35 40 bucks then okay yeah so they said now you know first thing was you know some somebody at the pump is fooling you or the driver is stealing petrol then all concerned <laughs> you know ratted me out saying it is not us it is this fellow see kilometer you know then yeah. they said each evening when the driver leaves he'll note kilometer and tell my dad ha huh. i didn't know this so quietly for a couple of weeks this drama has gone on where you know full night you know mm-hmm. south delhi lutian lutians delhi four five of us will go uh-huh. round and round then suddenly the full tank stopped so i said what is this you know it's just about e or just quarter tank saying see every time we do this in 3 days you do this and give it to back give it to us back wherever we have to go we will put 1000 rupees and go uh-huh. you know there is no question of whatever So then I had uh, four friends who'd all come with 50k, uh, mm. uh, 50 rupees, mm. uh, two or three uh, days a week, uh. and we'd all put for 200 uh. and go round and round, because you know we had that kind of pocket money, uh. but they didn't have the cars, the access to uh. doing this. Then I'm saying uh, I remember it. 
I used to have a set of wheels and tires where you know the steel belt under mm. the radial mm. Mm. was showing, and we kept that because you know it makes a lot of sound. You know, you turn okay. this much Haan. and the tire squeals. Haan. So all that happened, and uh, as a in progression, I had this friend uh, whose uh, relative used to rally. Okay. You know, he used to rally for uh, MRF tires. And there was this one rally where uh, he said, Main ja rahun. you know, you want to come, you come. So I also packed back baggage. Hmm. And so, and that was a whole different world of, uh, you know, I thought what I was doing was cool. super, supernatural. Huh. You know, I was born with it type of thing. And there I saw, uh, you know, this is a whole new world. Huh. And if I do what I, you, I'm used to doing in front of them, you know, I'll be laughing stock. So I said, okay, then he quietly came back and uh, I think I went and told my dad, you know, I want to rally. So, he's saying, see, you want to buy a nice car, I'll buy you a nice car. Uh, you want to um, buy a good bike, we'll buy you a good bike. But you have to be home at 8 o'clock. You know, there's no question of uh, gallivanting the country. Uh, and um, for them at home, um, you know, uh, general perception is Japanese cars are tin boxes. So my dad has, uh, um, you know, he's uh, visited the Audi factory as a guest mm. of the German embassy in mm. Delhi mm. back mm. in the day. So he has a certain perception on German cars. Mm. You know, it's not what perception we have today, but you know, back in the day, German versus uh, mm. Jap. So he said, I'll buy you a good car, good bike. You please have fun, study well, and be back home at 8 o'clock. Mm. So, um, I said, no, I want to buy an s -team. Okay, so carbureted s had just stopped. Huh. And a month before is when MPFI s the first MPFI s yeah. was sold. You know, so, so I knew a friend who owned a dealership back mm. then. Mm. So, he went and saw and, you know, we were taken for a test drive because he said, I'm not letting you sit and drive any of these cars. So, you know, that MPFI s team used to be very free driving and, you know, back in the day, yeah. within reason. And uh, all that happened and uh, I don't know how I managed it, but uh, the German car never came, but an MPFI s team definitely came home. Okay. And I think uh, I had to send it, um, I think, to Chennai to uh, get it built. So, my okay. dad then figured out that there is no way out. Uh, out of this. Ah. So he said, okay, I've called, you know, there's this person in uh, Chennai who will, uh, you know, build your car and ah. run your car and ah. stuff like that. Ah. So car left. And then I think between the federations, there was an issue. Ah. There was FMSCI and then MAI came in hmm. and, hmm. Hmm. you know, w the where my car was, that person was affiliated to FMSCI and they then suddenly didn't have a championship or hmm. they were proposing to have a championship versus MAI uh, had a championship in place. Hmm. And uh, so then, you know, uh, I was sent uh, to Chennai and uh, somebody else was deputed in Chennai. Hmm. So I have a lot of relatives in uh, Chennai. So they were deputed to put the car onto a truck and then to be sent to Coimbatore okay. to a different person. Okay. So that also happened and I ended up uh, Driving, uh, I think my first rally was back in 2001. Uh, it was in Nasik. Okay. So Nasik used to be a sleepy town with five and a half roads. Yeah. And that used to be Nasik. I recently went to Nasik and it's become a big, yeah. uh, big city. Hmm. Hmm. So. Um, and this was when uh, you were in 12th. I was in 12th standard. 12th standard. So, okay. Um, I think they had to get. Um, special permission to uh, all the transports the co-driver used to drive huh, huh. and the stage I drive because that's a closed road. Correct. Some Correct. Of the, you know, Transport some you cannot because… Something like uh, that. Uh, the road section. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it so happened that I uh, finished second in my class and I also finished uh, second overall. Okay. okay. Now, uh, I don't think… Uh, to be honest, uh, finishing second overall was on merit huh. because there were some five cars which got disqualified. But if they didn't <laughs> get disqualified, okay. uh, you know, they got disqualified end of uh, day one. 
I see. So I started day two, second on the road. Ha, so then, ha. correct. So whatever I'm saying, even if you kept those five, six cars on the road, uh, and they finished, I was the next car, hmm. and there was a whole janta of people behind us. Ha. So they said, not bad, you know, uh, whatever. And I think a couple of articles came out in the newspaper, Asian okay. Age and uh, Indian Express and Hindu. Ha. So whatever that did at home, it was an impression. Hmm. You know, if those articles would never come out, they'd say, ah, okay, you know, he's come back with two trophies, uh, whatever. So, um, I did quite well uh, that season. It also included a big crash where, uh, you know, I totaled the car. Like, the S team looked like a sand pro by the end of it. Oh, my God. And, uh, you know, but funnily, uh, uh, motorsport is a little different, uh, you know, when I came out, I'd have, you know, all these senior uh, rally drivers driving for various teams, who I'd always read of them in uh, Auto India, used to be a magazine before everything else, uh, you know, photo and mm -hmm. all that, and they'd say good. So I was, you know, I I thought to myself, uh, you know, I've gone and crashed one car, God knows. Good. <laughs> He's saying good. I said, uh, what do you mean? So <laughs> he saying no. Now you know what. Now that you've crashed, ha. you know the limit. So, I said that's a very different way of analyzing what just Situation happened. Ha. You know, yeah, you know, in my mind, my dupe chuka ho and ha. somebody's saying not bad. So that means, you know, I should keep doing this. And that I think uh, was uh, that first year was the start of it, and I think uh, we got uh, a lot of support from MRF uh, back in the day. You hmm. know, very early on. Hmm. And uh, till 2009, I was there. Okay. And uh, so my entire childhood and uh, my college years, uh, I travel 100 days a year and, you know, walk into college, 8.30 used to be first class. You know, at 9 o'clock, I'd get off and walk in with kid bags. And yeah. so that was college. Okay. And then uh, 2009, uh, there's something happened where I had to say, uh, you know, I need to take a break. From rallying? And from rallying. Okay. So, 2009, um, I'd driven two rallies and then I didn't drive the balance, three, four rallies. Okay. And uh, that happened and then I think somewhere in 2010, uh, Mahindra, somebody in Mahindra got in touch with me. Okay. And uh, said, you know, there's this uh, vertical of Mahindra called uh, Mahindra Adventure where, uh, you know, they do great escapes ah. and uh, stuff like that. Mm. And there is a rally program on the card. So, would you be interested? I said, yes, mm. of course. Mm. Now, that was back in 2010. Mm. But, uh, you know, it took me a year and a half, two years for them to sort out their program mm. and uh, for me to get an inroad into that program. And I think from 2012 onwards, I managed the entire team. And uh, I, you know, they hired me as driver. But uh, somewhere down the line, they said, you know, this is okay. We know this is your aspiration, but we want you to do this. Okay. So I said, okay. I said, now I'm an adult. I should make a huh. intelligent decision. Uh -huh. And I said, this is better huh. than this. Hmm. And I was running a workshop by then. I think okay. the workshop started in 2008. Oh, okay. So the funny uh, part is, uh, you know, once I started the workshop, Post that is when I drove my first autocross. You know, I'd never driven an autocross before. I'd, uh, uh, no offense meant to anybody, but I'd laugh at uh, people who drive autocrosses down south. Every other weekend, there used to be an autocross mm. in Bangalore, in mm. uh, various parts of Karnataka, Kerala. Mm. Mm. So I'd say, Ye kya hai? So then, uh, you know, I'd, I'd started this workshop and uh, I think a couple of uh, months later was uh, Northern Motorsport used to do a, yeah. um, what do you say, autocross. It, I think it was the last autocross and dirt before they shifted to India, India Expo Mart. I see, I see. I think uh, it was that proposed uh, metro station uh, uh, ground where this they was had. near Sector 29. I yeah. think so, where okay. the metro station is yeah, there yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I drove that and I. Uh, you know, because that was, uh, I said, now I have workshop and the people are saying, uh, um, you know, there's this young boy who's a rally driver and now he's yeah. opened a shop. Yeah. So I think there was somebody very senior had made a statement saying, uh, stethoscope, pen, se koi doctor nahi ban jata. Hmm. 